Hey Brewers, it's Paul here and today we're going to take a look at the effect of the mash length versus efficiency. So there's always debates, you need to mash for a full hour or a half an hour. So what I decided to do is get 10 pounds of just Canadian two-row malt. I'm going to put it into the Brewzilla, start a timer and every 15 minutes I'm going to check and see what the gravity is. So maybe we find out that yes, in 30 minutes you're getting pretty much full conversion or close to it and you can save a little bit of time in your brew day if you want to. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna put in my grain basket because last time I forgot and that's a hell of a thing to deal with. And as always on the Gen 4 when you're putting in your grain basket make sure you're pushing down on the bottom plate there because it has a tendency to kind of float up. We're good there. Stir in the grains. So as I said, I think I said I had 10 pounds of grain, I actually have 10 and a half. I figured most people use between 9 and 12 for most grain bills, so 10 and a half was a good kind of average point. And I decided to mash that into uh, 19 liters of water. I like to mash a little bit thinner usually. I'm gonna pay extra attention to make sure there's no dough balls in here. I can feel a ton. I usually don't pour all the grain in at once. I kind of got distracted there. I usually do it about a quarter at a time. But like I said, we're mashing thin, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I just want to get my timer ready here. <laughs> okay, and as soon as I think we're doughed in, I'm going to start it. Because conversion is already happening right now, so I want to kind of take that into account here. So yeah, that's pretty good. We're gonna start, get our recirculation going. And because I'm gonna be coming here every 15 minutes or so and checking and stirring, I'm just not gonna bother putting the uh, lid on for this. I don't think it's gonna have much of an effect. The other thing is I'm gonna be using a refractometer to take the samples. It's just a lot faster. And I usually do this every other brew day. You wanna calibrate this and it's pretty easy. All you need is uh, some RO or, uh, you know, clean water. Uh, that's about room temperature. Just put some on your refractometer. And then you want to make sure that it's reading 1.000. It's dialed in here. It's a little harder to read with water than with wort, but yeah, that's pretty much bang on 1.00. If it's not, pretty much every re refractometer I've used, uh, there's a little screw here, and then you can uh, just adjust that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see inside, but you need just a little flathead screwdriver, and you'd turn that clockwise or counterclockwise until uh, it was reading 1.000 with some clean room temperature water. Uh, so that's it for now. We'll be back in 15 minutes, and I'll take a uh, gravity reading. All right, so we're getting up to the 15 minute mark. Uh, so I'm gonna stop the pump for a second. And uh, my plan is to collect probably like a half liter of wort to test. I think that'll be more accurate than if I just took a little like tablespoon out. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna run and grab a spoon and be right back. Okay, I got a spoon and an ice pack. So I'm gonna give this a really good stir. Get a spoonful here, pour the rest back in. And then just to cool this off quicker, I'm just gonna put it on the pack of ice and just blow it a little bit. I'm sure it would be fine. The uh, refractometer has auto temperature correction, but if we can make it a little bit more accurate for 30 seconds of work, why not, right? Okay. We are at about 1060, pretty much right on the dot. So 50 minutes in, 1060. Uh, I will hopefully remember to write that down and then we'll be back in another 15 minutes, which will make half an hour. 
I'm gonna give this a little stir while we're at it. Okay, we'll be back in about uh, 12 minutes or so. Okay, we're at pretty close to 30 minute mark here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna find my refractometer. Okay, it's right here. I cleaned it off already. Pull our sample. It should be good enough. Give it a good stir. Put the rest back in. Cool off the sample real quick. This works surprisingly well, by the way. You could just use an ice cube or something. All right. So 15 minutes in, we were at 1060. Half an hour in, we are at 1064. Okay, so a little bit more. Interesting, so you do get well, I guess we'll see after an hour, or I might even do 75 minutes, just see what happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a good stir and check again at the 45 minute mark in 15 minutes. So we'll see then. All right, we're at 45 minutes. We'll pull another sample here. Same like last time. Put that back in there. And yeah, I think I will do 75 minutes, just to see. Might as well, we've gone this far. Okay. So 15 minutes, 1060, 30 minutes, about 1064. 45 minutes, 1067. So yeah, between 15 minutes and 45, you get seven gravity points. So I'd probably do that, <laughs> unless you're really pressed for time. But we'll just let it go. For another 15 minutes, we'll be back. We'll take another reading. See you then. Alrighty, so we are right about the one hour mark here. So I'm gonna pull another sample. Give it a good stir. And I wish I would have thought about this earlier, but I could have got some iodine and actually did an iodine test at uh, every time we tested the gravity just to see uh, if it converted at all before an hour or even at an hour, maybe it's not converted. From my experience with today's highly modified malt, an hour mash is, uh, you, you should be totally converted by then. All right, so if memory serves me, we had 1060, 1064, and then 1067 or so. So now an hour in. I hope you guys can't hear the tape that Noah's using right now. The tape gun's pretty loud. We are at just under 1070. So basically between a 15 minute mash and an hour mash, 10 gravity points. Um, I mean, that's pretty significant, but I bet you if you threw a couple pounds of base malt in and did a 15 minute mash, you'd probably get to the same gravity reading. Uh, just something to keep in mind if you're looking for a little bit quicker brew day. Um, which I might test out in a future video. I'm just gonna give this another stir. I mean, since we're already here, we got Trav, our awesome camera guy, shooting me. Might as well, let's try at 75 minutes. Let's see if anything magical happens after the one hour mark. So yeah, what the hell? See you in 15 minutes. All right, so we're approaching 75 minutes. We started with 1060 at a 15 minute reading and to right around 1070 at 60 minutes. So let's see at 75 minutes if we got any more conversion. All right, clean that off, grab my sample. Another good stir, go. And let's see what that extra 15 minutes got us. We are at 1071. So another two points. Um, I think at this, I'm not gonna go any longer. I think 75 minutes is long enough, especially only for you know, a couple more gravity points. But uh, I mean, that's pretty interesting. So basically during the hour mash, or sorry, between 15 minutes and one hour, so 45 minutes, you're gaining about 10 gravity points. Um, so, you know, if you want to speed up your brew day, you could probably do a 30 minute mash like a lot of people do. Uh, you, you gain about five gravity points between half an hour and an hour. You could add a pound or two more base malt. Uh, you could add a little bit of dry malt. 
The only other thing that I'd take into consideration is if the mash isn't fully converted. I know there could be some things that happen that aren't desirable because of that, but at the moment, I can't remember what they are. So if you know, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Is this gonna make you mash for less time, more time, not change anything at all? Uh, just let me know in the comments down below. I try to read and answer every single question you guys throw my way. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Cheers.